everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneur Talks podcast run by Women Flix. I'm very excited to have you here with me today. Yeah, Yola, thanks for having me on to Women Flix, even though I'm a, I'm a gentleman, a man. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> it's a pleasure. We do, we do connect with men, by the way. <laughs> it's, really good. it's really good. It's not just women, but yes, everyone is welcome. So before I start to crack my with my questions um, regarding your journey, your 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 business, and your yourself, where are you talking from? Um, currently, I am in the basement of a shared <laughs> office space, which yeah. some looks like a factory manufacturing <laughs> spot. I'm in the basement in Shanghai, China, um, and uh, yeah, it's a very interesting place to, place to be this time of the year, um, as you know, with things going on in the world. Uh, but I do feel very safe here in Shanghai, China. Oh, wow. And what time is there right now? Right now, it is 9.15 p.m. Oh, okay. So it's nighttime. So, you know, I'm in London and it is 1 o'clock. It's 1 o'clock. So I've learned the, 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 the time zone for everywhere. Seven hours London. I can tell you that. Seven hours. Really? Six, hours seven, six hours South Africa. I can tell you just like that. Really? I, I'm like, I'm still learning. It is sometimes I'm still learning. It is hard, but you get to know. Yeah, yeah. It comes to a point that you get to know very well. But yeah, you, yeah. Thank you, Colin, for being here. Then nine thirty in the evening, and you already had dinner, I presume. So and not as yet, not as yet. I'm staying in the office, but you know the journey. The journey of a global entrepreneur, right? Is sometimes you have to really have a lot of calls in the evenings. You got to have a lot of calls early in the morning. And if you're like me, who has a young baby at home, a toddler at home, you can't have these calls at home <laughs> because there'll be somebody running around in the background. My, my home office is really my home. So it's no problem being here. And then they will be waiting for when I get back home. Oh, bless. Okay, fantastic. So, and now let's go for your, for your story. The reason you are here today to tell us about your journey and your business. So... Let's start with one simple question that can be difficult as well. And what is your passion, Colin? <sighs> my, my passion, and if I had to say just to listen, one passion, I have a passion for endurance sports. But what that means is I have a passion for being totally, totally, totally beaten down, exhausted, mentally, physically, emotionally, but keep going forward. So I have a passion to really not have a limit to myself. Wow. I do understand you very well. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Sometimes I think that is my passion as well. Yeah, yeah. I so think my, a lot of entrepreneurs, I it, think a lot of entrepreneurs have that same passion because you have to have that mentality to keep going sometimes yeah, when things don't look yeah. don't look so bright. That's so true because sometimes I think I don't care. I need to go. I keep moving. Keep moving. My my yeah. my legs can handle this. Still can handle. So you carry on. Carry on. Mm -hmm. That's a good answer. Thank you. <laughs> really good. Really good. Made me think. Woo. So and so you run. You are in Shanghai for choice of living or is business or you didn't born there, right? <laughs> no, I, was, I wasn't born here. And I came to Shanghai 12 years ago as a strategic move. My, my parents are double immigrants from Jamaica, then to Canada, and then to the U.S. So we always had that sense of international nest in our family. I think you maybe you had an interview that I saw where you interviewed somebody that talked about the immigrant mindset. Yeah. And that immigrant mindset is you keep pushing forward. You keep trying to create a better and better life for your family. So after being in North America for about 34 years, I decided, well, 32 years, I decided I wanted to get more, more global experience. And I joined IBM and a year and a half later, they brought me over to, over to China. And I've been here for 12 years ever since. So it was, it was planned, but I remain here now because you know, there's so much opportunity here and there's so, so much of an international environment here. You just learn, learn, learn so much. Wow, wow. I don't have idea. I don't, I don't have. I now I kind of start to have idea that is the, that is a, a really big world. China is just something that I, I'm seeing now, right? Like um, 
a big platform or like a big place where I can learn all the time. Because right. there's always something new coming out. It is, it is big. And your, so your family is there? No, it's not there. Like my, my new family is here. <laughs> and I say my new family. No parents. Right. I got, yeah, my parents passed away a number of years ago. Most of my family is either in Jamaica, uh, United States, or Canada. We have some family over, over there in Brixton where you are there as well. But mm -hmm. most of my family is in North America. My, I, I say my new family, which consists of my wife, I've been married about three years, a little baby boy who's about a year and a half, and of course, my wife's family. So yeah. we have, I have a new, a new large family over here as well. Oh, that's amazing. That's really good. So, and so you came to China, you came now, you went to Shanghai with IBM. Do you still working with IBM or what else? What happened? Yeah, interestingly, when I first came to China, I came to Shenzhen and Shenzhen is in the south part of, of China. And it's one of the largest, man, it used to be one of the largest manufacturing environments. So if you have a laptop, a cell phone, odds are it was manufactured in Shenzhen. I left Shenzhen with IBM still in 2012 and came here to Shanghai. I left IBM in 2018 and then I started my own company. So it's been a, it's been a, I gotta say the last 12 years have been very, very wonderful and interesting. And the last two years, um, having my own uh, coaching, coaching company, training company and IT company has been even more interesting. The keyword wow. interesting. <laughs> wow. So you got your own company. How? What's the name of your company? Older Guy. Older Guy Consulting, Older Guy Training, Older Guy Life Coaching. What is that coming from, Older Guy? Older Guy. What is that? Older Guy. So my um, when I went to college, I went to Howard University in, in, in Washington, D.C., and HBCU, which is Historically Black College University. Um, a lot of, I got to give a plug to my university. Uh, our, the, the new vice president, Kamala Harris, she was a graduate of my university, so big plug okay. for Howard University. So when I was there, I pledged fraternity. One of the names I got in my fraternity was Older Guy. Um, I got that name because I was a wrestler in college. I had a wrestling scholarship. And Older Guy, back in Africa, back during the times when men still went through manhood training. Um, and as you may know, manhood training means a boy can leave his house yeah. as a boy and go through some rituals. And when he comes back, he's a man now. Even to his mother, he's a man now. So wow. part of that manhood training, a lot of different activities. You know, there'd be one man who taught the young men how to hunt. Another, another one taught them how to cook, what, taught them how to make things. There was one gentleman who taught them how to protect themselves, how to fight. His name was Ole Guy. And back then, it wasn't fighting, it was wrestling. So because, you know, people say I'm a good, I was a good wrestler and whatnot. Yeah. They gave me that name. And it's very funny because what he was, was a coach, a trainer. And I felt that name is very apropos for what mm -hmm. I'm doing now. It fits very good. That's, a, that's really good. So your friends call you Oli Gay? No, they call me Colin, but that was a, a oh. name. So when you play fraternity, you have a lot of different names that, that they give you, that you earn, actually. Oh. That was one of the names that I earned, but they still call me Colin. Actually, actually the comments are very... Some things I can't say on TV, on, I can't say out loud, but <laughs> <laughs> a very, a very, nice, very nice story because it's a, yeah. it's a reason to be Oli Gay. And I actually, the right. piece written is quite interesting. I wouldn't, if you would say to me Oli Gay, I would write in a nine different way, but I like, I really like the G Y E, it's really good mm. instead mm. of G A Y, you know, gay. Right. <laughs> it's quite interesting, right. really, really good, really good. And so what happens in Oli Gay? What is it all about? You already told me it's coaching, uh, training, and something else. Right, business, business consulting. So it's, the business is about, and this is, this is how a lot of new entrepreneurs do. Well, this is how I did anyway. The business is about anything I have a skill to do, <laughs> For, quite frankly. One of the things I thought about when starting my own company was, and let me, I'll, I'll take you back. Yeah. When, when, I left, when I left IBM, when I say I left IBM, IBM gave me a choice. Either move to Beijing and find a new job in IBM, or if your job is going, or if your job is going away, take a package and go bye-bye. Mm -hmm. I decided to take the package and go bye-bye. And I did that because 
I said to myself, I've always had some goals I want to accomplish. It's a passion. And if I don't do it now, while I'm getting a package that gives me a runway to not worry about money, I might not do it. So my passion, the vast majority of my life, has been to make money talking. Make money using this as my tool. I have a brother who's an engineer. He loves making things. He, he has a lot of patents, but he wants to make something. Take these materials, put them together, and make something. Yeah. Not me. I want to have a business that's made by one thing, what I, what I say. So with that, I, I decided to go into coaching. And coaching is more listening than talking, but also training. And I've, I've always been good at working with and talking with crowds. So I, I wanted to start that business. And then the business consulting side comes in based on my background is IT. So I have 25 odd years of business experience. So that part as well. But the bottom line is I'm not selling you software. I'm not selling you hardware. I'm selling you my experiences, my, my intellect. And that's what I love because in this world, we can get paid doing anything. You think about it. People get paid to walk dogs. People get paid to live with food. People get paid to design things. You can get paid to do anything in this world. So why not get paid doing what you really love? It might not be easy, but you can, it can happen. So I, I said, you know what? I want to get paid by using my tool. My tool is what comes out of my mouth. And that's the road I've been on. I love it. I love it. The, the way you put, put it together, like the vo your voice, your, your talk, your speak. Right, so, right. So you've been, so since you started in 2018, right? 18. Right. That's when I officially started. I was doing a lot of small things before, but when I officially started, meaning right. that's my main bread and bread and butter, 2018. Yeah. Have you been, have you been on stages or talking with people or just, just doing your coaching individually? Well, my, my coaching is. Or groups. I mean. Well, my, my coaching started at when I was at IBM, large groups. But my speaking, so I, so I've, I separate my coaching for speaking because it's two separate mindsets, two separate things. When I'm coaching, I'm doing more listening, helping you or a team reaching your accomplishment. When I'm speaking, I love motivational speaking. When I'm speaking, I'm talking to a number of people. And I, I, my largest crowd was probably a couple hundred people a few years ago. But now it's, it's all online. <laughs> Sad to say, it's all online. I love being in, uh, I love being on stage, but but again, um, to answer your question, uh, most of my speak, speaking now is well, it, it's to crowds. Although my coaching is typically one on one. No, oh, okay, good. And what? Who is your niche? Because you you mentioned that you is there any people that are related with IT or is I don't know. Tell me. Gosh, no, um, I do not. <laughs> I do not want to just coach people who are IT based. I love it. I love it. But I think that what well, my niche is career development, helping people to um, either find ways to enhance the current career or find and succeed in a new career. Expat coaching, expat coaching here in Shanghai and globally, a lot of people move for new jobs. And sometimes, especially when you move into a new country, you find that, for example, you're in London. Say, for example, um, you and your spouse came here. That means you're coming here for a contract. One of these not working. The one not working may have a very, very hard time to give up their, their job, which may be their identity. So helping expats to don't feel bad about being here. You have a, you're going to be here a short time. Embrace being here. So now you have career development. You have expat coaching. We also have personal development coaching. And personal development coaching is very broad in a range. Right. It really just means helping people who want to continue to increase the ability to have and live the life they want to. How do they do that? How do they go from where they are to getting over some things and getting to where they want to be? And then last year, we had a new, I had a new niche, you can say, COVID coaching. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, COVID. And I'll, and I'll be the first, yeah, I'll be the first one to tell you, COVID coaching is a lie, okay? It's a lie. COVID coaching is not real, but people want to hear the term COVID coaching. And I'll give you a, a really quick example. Is that okay? Yes, of course. I'm okay. curious. I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. I had back in being here in China, I was here literally when it first hit. And I had a lot of my clients who are also in China who were having 
tough times dealing with the new restrictions. One of the first ones was staying home. You now had to be home the vast majority of the day. So the house became the gym, the school, entertainment place, the spa, the health center, the work office, everything. Oh. And now you have spouses and kids who are spending all the time inside going crazy. So okay. some clients you know, said, we want to avoid the COVID divorce, right? We want to avoid ruining our relationships. And you know, they said, Colin, I want some COVID coaching because my relationship, we're now starting to, to butt heads too much and we don't have space to cool down and calm down. And I said to him or my clients, I said, look, this is not COVID coaching because the odds are if your relationship has some issues now that existed before, but you weren't, you didn't have to deal with it because you could go out you could go walk around and go to work. Yeah. There wasn't much pressure there. All COVID did is take the little small things and make them bigger. So COVID didn't create any new issues. All COVID did was put a magnifying glass on those issues and make them more present. So once people realize that it's not about COVID, but now that we're inside, instead of trying to just make it work until we can go outside again, because we don't know what that's going to be, let's work on these issues together. Yeah. And that's not either to do. It's not either to do when you're mad. But so, so to me, it's not COVID coaching. It's still life coaching. Yeah. Very good. Very good. I like the COVID coaching. Very good. <laughs> but it's so not, niches, nothing so. to do with COVID, really. Because I totally, <laughs> totally. Because and nowadays, like one year after, now we have another type of COVID coaching, which people is needing on because they are on depression. They are confused. Mm -hmm. They are tired, exhausted. They right. know, and they know anymore fighting with their partners, but they fighting with their minds. So there we go, another COVID <laughs> coaching. I think. Yeah, yeah, and you know, a lot of people are, are, are using the wrong background. They're using the background of, I want things to go back to how they were before. Yeah. But in a lot of cases, they weren't happy before. <laughs> you know, they yeah, weren't, right. they weren't they, and some people were happy. My point being, don't try to go back. You know, in life, we say, man, you know what? When I was 20 years younger, my body was the SHIT, right? I was looking good. I was slim. I would have more energy. I want to go back to that time. You can't go back. No. The question is, what can you build going forward, right? Or going forward. What can you do going forward? So don't try to get back what you had even last year. The question is, what can you get going forward now? And only looking forward. Don't look back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So true. Because when it comes to the... Like I said to you, the, the, the new COVID see the coaching is right. about depression, anxiety. Mm -hmm. it don't, it's not, and people think like this happening because COVID, but it's no COVID. You already were like that, but you right. were not treating yourself. And now you see yourself isolated and you're getting crazy. Like in mm -hmm. your mind, everything is a COVID fault because there's so many people in the world right now. They're complaining about, oh, I want to get back like we you just mentioned. Right. But there is no back. There is no way back. It is there is no way back. Look forward. We need to do something different to be able to carry on and, and look forward. I agree. Very, very good, Colin. Very good. And do you, another question I do have for you. Um, I was thinking, no, you already told me that is different. But do you, do you coach women and males, right? Well, yeah, it has to be a woman or man. <laughs> it has to be because the other ones tend not to answer back. I would say the, the vast majority of my clients are females. Probably about 60, 40, 60, 40 are, 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 are females. So, yeah, I, I, I coach a lot of women. I coach a lot of Asians. I coach a lot of Europeans, a lot of Africans. And I can say very, very diverse clientele. Oh, wow, that's really good. And... One really, I'm very curious. Do you speak Chinese already? I do speak Mandarin. I do speak, but I speak what I call survival Mandarin, meaning I can go outside and talk and be fine, order food, get home, no issues. But I say, I can tell you what she what she to tofu, right? What she wanted to ifu. And I'm saying, I like your, I like your clothes. Oh. But I can't, I can't say I like the button on your shirt. I can't um, say that. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, and there's so much, and there's so much English here, and the challenge of, 
a lot of China, these you want to practice with the Chinese friends, they want to practice English. And because the English is always are better than the Mandarin, English wins. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Because I had a friend here from Taiwan in London. Mm -hmm. She she speaks Mandarin and she was studying to get uh, to become a teacher, a Mandarin teacher here in England. Mm -hmm. But it's so hard. I, I just found that language so hard and the way you write and everything. But you get used to that, you, you are you get used to country. It, yeah. you, if I go there, if I spend one month in Shanghai or any part in China, I, I'm sure I'm going to come up, come up with... Well, well, if you spend one month here and <laughs> interact with the culture yeah. and the people, yeah. a lot of foreigners come here and they, they instantly find people who are from their country and only spend time with those people and don't interact with local people. It happens oh, so much. Really? Absolutely. Oh, I wonder. That, 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 that's not abnormal. I mean, that, that's not abnormal. If, if you know, if your Taiwan friend who went to, to, to London, I'm quite sure she tried to find some Chinese friends um, also. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Eat, eat, eat the same food and things like that. So, yeah. Ah, yeah. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Got it, got it. But, hmm. I, I, I like to go to countries and just learn about themselves. Yes. All the time. Yes. Im immerse yourself in yeah. that new culture. You get into that, nyo, 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 and then I don't know what they're saying, but I will learn. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and, and as an entrepreneur, it's very important that, for me anyway, that I had that habit. Because when you're starting a new business, you never know two things. You never know who your future client can be. Yeah. And you never know what connections or relationships people have. And if you really want to get, if you really want to get um, a, a smoother journey or path, you have to know people in the local system. You have to, I always tell people, you have to know somebody who knows a doctor, a lawyer, and a policeman. If you find somebody locally who knows those people, any emergency, you have somebody you can go to, okay? On a business front, you have some people who know how business gets done here. And odds are, it's not going to be the foreigner who came over here. It's going to be the people who've been living here all their lives. Yeah. And yeah. the cousins, the cousins and uncles and whatever are the, are the people who have the inside track. Yeah, you're right. Thank you so much, Colin. Thank you so much for this, this podcast session. I'm really enjoying and I've got one more question for you. And okay. it's because uh, we 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 will go very soon. It is how can people connect with you and find more about your work? Okay, so I'm not going to give you the simple answer of here's my website because you said how can they connect with me? Well, the first thing is after they've contacted me via the information I'll give later, it's being authentic. If you're really wanting to improve your life, and that could be a very small thing to a very complex thing, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. If you want to improve your life, if you want to make a change, if you want to go from where you are now to a, a, a place that's more positive, when we have a conversation, share that with me and be open. Tell me how you failed in the past to do that. Tell me why it's important to you. Be authentic because that's how we're going to connect. Mm -hmm. You calling me, emailing me, if we're not being authentic, we will never connect. We'll only talk. Mm -hmm. But if you want to connect, reach out to me and be authentic and don't be scared. You can be nervous, but don't be scared. My goal is to help you achieve your goals, whatever that may be. Now, to be able to have a conversation with me, you should go to my website, www.oligye.com. O-L-I-G-Y-E.com. When you go there, you can navigate to signing up for a free one hour session. And during that session, that's how we connect. And remember, the goal is not for you to call me. The goal is for us to work together to yeah. reach your goal. Right. Fantastic. You said the best way to people get connected with someone and would you. It's the first time in so many seasons. I never heard this beautiful way of telling people it's not about just to call me. I love it. I love it. I'm going to copy. All right. Is that all right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm going to be talking now but like that because I feel the same. And it's very important that people understand that it's not just about to 
to get in that call, like to make the sake of just calling a ranger call, huh? And then you don't know, you're not authentic. You know, you're not going to be authentic. Right. Because it's so many, many times calling that happens to me, get to know people in different platforms. And then people, oh, I would like to have a call, but they're not telling, they're not saying anything about them, but they already want to call with me. Why? Why? I don't, uh, you're not, authentic. I don't feel that they're authentic. And this makes right. really, really good. And you know, you know, though, what I found is sometimes people don't know how to be authentic. And sometimes people are saying, look, I don't know you, who, you know, how do we build up that trust? Which is why I always say, people who, who listen to your podcast, they're listening because they're trying to learn something. They're trying to, they're trying to improve their lives. Right. And we, we both know that if you improve your life, odds are the lives of your family, friends, it also improved. So people sometimes have to, so, so they, they want to do it, but don't know how to do it. So when we say, give us a call, reach out to me, it's not so easy. And if they take the chance to do it, we all have responsibility to help them become more authentic, to make sure we're asking them the questions, making sure we're letting them talk, right? A lot of coaches want to just talk, 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 and tell, tell, tell. No, 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 no. I want to, you know, as I told you earlier, when a new person and I get together, the call isn't just to see if coaching will help them. It's also to see if they're ready for coaching because you have to be ready for it. So I think that that initial conversation, you know, we have to know how to help them open up, help them be relaxed and help them be authentic. Fantastic. There we go. Yeah, totally. Thank you once again, Colin. It was really yeah, nice. It was my pleasure. <laughs> Have you here? Uh, I know now, I believe you're going to go and have a sleep because it's evening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to carry on <laughs> yeah. my day, but it was a pleasure to have you here. And I, I, before I go, I remember just now, I will, all the, all the, how I say, all the information about what, how to find you and the link to get that call if you if you want to be authentic or if you feel like you are authentic and you want to get in touch with Colin will be on the description of the podcast so don't you don't need to worry because when your podcast will come live everyone that listening and that will get in touch all right Great. Great. God bless you and we keep in touch yeah, thanks for having me okay bye-bye you're welcome bye-bye bye-bye Colin take care